Hi everyone, so in my last video of my Top Thrill 2 Media Day experience vlog, I realize now that I kind of didn't really talk about the on-ride experience like at all in that video. That day was really quite hectic and it completely slipped my mind to actually talk about the on-ride experience because I had talked about it so much with people there that I kind of just felt like I had recorded it and spoke that to you guys, but it turns out I didn't. And I didn't even really notice that when I was editing it either because I was editing it so fast to try to get it out so quickly. So. In this video, we were going to discuss everything about the on-ride experience into full detail about my experience on the ride, how it felt, how it ran, and potentially address some concerns that I see some people having in the comment section on Twitter and the internet in general. So let's get into this. Starting off here, sitting down in that seat Woo! finally, I had literally go, waited guys. five hours to get on the ride because I wanted to get my first time reaction on camera. Over the course of those five hours, I had so much time for my anticipation to just build to an immense, immense amount. <laughs> Literally every person, every one of my friends that I saw get on for their first ride, watch them ride it, and then see their faces as they came off, like literally like like just in complete shock and awe of what they just experienced and to hear them say things like dude i haven't felt that like way in a coaster in a long time that was like that was like legitimately awesome shout out to cole and david's reaction how was, how was that absolutely amazing i was getting quite stressed trying to get my footage because i wanted to ride so badly i'm burning alive not riding I, i'm <sighs> And I felt like I was missing out on so much precious ride time. I was so excited to finally sit down in that seat and so relieved too as well because for a moment there I was afraid I wouldn't even get my footage. There was a moment where I was afraid I might only get to ride it once and I had accepted that. Thankfully though I ended up riding it three more times for a total of four rides. So I kind of cut my thoughts out early on the vlog too because in the vlog after I got off the ride I used to see me start to talk a little bit but then I cut it off. Wow, that was absolutely amazing. What I cut out was me saying, I'm so sad I didn't get to ride it more time so, because literally like, it's 12.40. I, I don't think there's gonna be time for another ride here. We here. Where are we? Yeah. Here we are. There we are. Yay. I'm going to ask and see if we can get a Oh yes. I hope you guys really enjoyed my first time reaction on that. In the future for Media Day events, Perfect. I'm not gonna do that again. I'm just gonna ride the ride um, and then film when it's I can film. So that might be the last time. <laughs> Thankfully, they extended longer though to get everybody who was in the media line their on-ride footage. So, major shout out to Cedar Point and the team operating the cameras for working a little extra longer on your already extremely long day to accommodate everybody in line there. We're gonna fill in the rest of the details on the thoughts and experiences here. All right, so we're giggling, we're in the station. Let's skip forward, let's get to the first launch. Oh, also they have, the audio is so good. Like when you pull out here to the launch track and you pause and you wait, there's this really loud like bass drop sound right before the countdown begins. Now get ready, here oh. we go. Here we go, it's time. Okay, let's talk about that first launch. So the first launch, I was a first launch doubter. I thought it was gonna be lame. I thought it was gonna be boring. boring. Well, okay, maybe not boring. I thought it would be fun, but it wasn't gonna be like, I just I just wrote it off. I didn't think it was gonna be that exciting. What I realized is like, oh, hey, actually this launch still feels fast. The acceleration is gentle, kind of like a mock launch, but 74 miles per hour is not slow. Like, period, in any regard. Like, it's still already a fast speed. And you get up to 74 miles an hour and you're staying at that speed for quite some time. Oh, okay. <laughs> so you really get a sense of the speed to come and it's a great like warm up for the rest of the ride. You're like dipping your toes in the water in the pool to see how it feels, get a quick little taste, while at the same time, it's like the tutorial that is nothing like the game. Once you get into the game, you know, like when you're starting a new video game, you get into the tutorial, you're like, oh, okay, here we go. And then the game is like, bah! That's the first launch compared to the rest of the ride experience. Into the rollback now. 
The roll back actually feels really quite good in the front. You don't go super high up the spike, but you're vertical and you still get a little bit of floater. Yet again, the warm up, easing you in somewhat. That's, that's the last moment of calm you will have on this ride. <laughs> it's about to turn way the frick up because that reverse launch goes crazy. And on paper, it did not sound that crazy to me either. Like going from 74 to 100 miles per hour, like 30 mile per hour launch, like that sounds like nothing, but you forget again that 100 miles per hour is really freaking fast and you're going 100 miles per hour for a while, like a good while you get a really good sense of the speed, the feel, the rush, everything, it's crazy. And this launch feels punchier than the first one. Whoa! Right there, that's what I'm realizing. Oh my God. Okay, this ride just turned up. Oh, okay! Whoa! You're kind of squishing to your seat a little bit on the come up of the spike. Oh, and as you go up, it's the coolest feeling right there and that moment it feels like time stops you're floating completely weightless like it feels like what it would feel like to be in space i assume the floater is so good you're staring down you look over at power tower and it's like below you everything on the ground is so small you're so far away from it such a glorious feeling up here you get a really good amount of time to take in the view which is great because well the next time you're up that high, you have way less time to take in the view. Let's say that. The descent begins and you rocket back down to earth. Already going super freaking fast. And then you're into the launch. Hitting 120, like you're going 120 for a good while here too. Like it is so fast. It's not the insane zero to 120 that it was before, but the 120 still feels incredible. It's so fast. The speed feels so intense and you just went up a massive 400 foot tall reverse spike. Like to get to do that experience versus the zero 120, I would choose this experience over the old hydraulic launch any day. So here we go, still going, 120, zooming, absolutely ripping up the top hat. Look at this, look at the, the laterals here on the freaking twist. Everyone gets thrown over. Absolutely everyone is thrown over. One of the reasons I believe for this is that the seats on the Zamperla trains, the new trains, actually sit up higher than the old seats on the Intamin trains. So the heart lining is thrown off a bit, so you really get like whipped over on this and the twist coming down. And then you're, you can see here, we're already coming up out of our seat a little bit, like we're floating here already out of our seats. Floater, floater, ejector. Oh, well, I mean, not, not just floater, sorry, ejector. That was like such an insane feeling. And here I am trying to say, if you haven't already, now would be a great time to like the video, subscribe to the channel, thanks. As we go over the top hat, but I had to hurry so fast to say that because as you guys can tell, we've already crested the, hop, the top hat. Like we're about to go down the drop here. Here we go, down the drop and then into the absolutely absurd twist. The twist goes crazy. I really had to engage like my ab muscles to keep myself locked into the seat there because again, the seats sit higher. So the laterals on the twist hit hard, but the heart lining is aligned slightly differently than it was before with the Intamin trains. So you already launched up into your lap bar. As you go over the top hat, you have no time to process what just happened on the top hat before you're hurtling down into the, into the twist. Like there's no time to prepare for it. And then it just rips you around and it's pulling you up against your lap bar so hard. It's, it's phenomenal. It's absolutely, absolutely, absolutely so insane. Like I, I wish I had better words. I really do. But truly you guys, this ride is nothing to mess around with. Coming to that brake run just completely shook to my core in awe of what just happened. Absolutely amazing. Now that we've completed the ride cycle, let's talk about the rattle as well. We've all seen the rattle. Everyone's been concerned by it. The shuffling of the train that we see. Um, all right, let's start here. So we see, you see we start kind of bouncing around a little bit here. We're gonna skip now to the next launch. Like, like it's really not even moving me around that much. Like. Like there is, you you notice it, but it kind of just adds to the intensity. It's not an uncomfortable rattle. Like King Ka is worse than this ride. One time I rode King Ka. I've only ridden King Ka once or twice. No, I've ridden it at least twice. I know I rode it no towards the front and then I rode it in the back. I remember the back seat experience being like crazy because we we're like really fishtailing. It felt like we were fishtailing down the launch track. This is nothing like that. Like that was like, oh God, I don't like this actually. It's actually quite uncomfortable. This was not uncomfortable like in the slightest. The, the speed is also so much, like all the air rushing by you backwards and then forwards, like 
it didn't bother me. It truly did not bother me. I noticed it, it was like, okay, here we are. But it just kind of just felt like it was just a part of the speed, traveling that fast. Like, it really was not uncomfortable for me. Plenty of other people had the same reaction to the rattle. It looks way worse on camera than it feels in person. Also, one thing to note, I rode in the blue train on like my last ride. I sat in the second row right seat and that was the smoothest ride I had on it. Like it felt very solid. It felt like way more like solid than maybe the black train. Um, I don't know if it was the train specifically or maybe just the position. Maybe the right side is a little smoother. Maybe the wheels were smoother on that seat. I don't know, but I had a very smooth ride on that, smoother than this one. Like I remember feeling the rattle on this one, but I remember riding that last ride on the blue train and really like working to pay attention to it now that I had ridden the ride three times. And by the way, I couldn't even like mentally piece the entire ride together in my brain until I had ridden it three times. Like the first time I, I feel like I only really remembered the reverse launch, like a bit of the spike and like part of the top hat. Everything else was just like such a blur. And after riding it three times, I finally could like really feel like I had a good kind of visual representation of the feeling, the sensations of the ride, like from start to finish, pieced together in my brain. And then the fourth ride was great. And so on the fourth ride, that's why I really tried to pay attention to the rattle to assess like how bad is it. And I got a really smooth ride that time. So I don't know what, I don't know what happened there, um, but really, I would say the rattle is nothing to be concerned about. When you hit the brake run after your first ride on this, the furthest thing from your brain is gonna be the rattle. Let me tell you that, cause all the high points on this ride are so bonkers <laughs> that it's just, it doesn't matter. It truly just, it does not matter. That's pretty much my full ride experience here. My thoughts on what it was like to ride Top Thrill 2. Now the next question of downtime. The thing ran all day just fine. There was one time on my very last ride, I sat down with Colin from Hollywood Studios, again, in the blue train, you know. There was some like weird something with the re restraint, restraint error. So they had us get off, put the restraints down, sent the train around, ran it empty, and then it was good to go. We hopped on and had a great ride. Like, <laughs> like we had the smoothest ride I ever had. So it didn't go down at all that day. There were no issues. It ran perfectly fine. So just from that day alone, I feel like it will go well. There's really, no way to know for certain, I suppose. But I have a good feeling this will be an extremely reliable ride. It'll have way more uptime than the previous dragster. And I'm very excited for all of you guys to get to ride it this summer. Any of you who are able to go and are going this summer, I really look forward to hearing your thoughts on the ride. I can't wait to see people's reactions. So if you feel so inclined, post your ride reaction on Instagram, on your Instagram story or whatever, tag me in it. I'll share it, I'll share my thoughts on it. I would love to see and hear what you guys think of the ride. A great place you can talk about that too is also my Discord server. I have a free one now as well. That you guys could drop your top little two reactions in as well. And I would love to see them. I love the Discord. It's been such a fun place. Like thank you to everyone who has jumped in and made it such an amazing space. It's a very warm, welcoming community of people who are here to just have fun and enjoy life and be silly. So if you're one of those people, please join the Discord. The link is down in the description down below. With that, I think that covers everything. I've touched on all my little notes here. If you guys have any more questions, leave them down in the comment section as well, and I will do my best to answer them too. So thank you guys for listening. I hope this helps ease some of your worries about the ride potentially not living up to its hype slash the rattle being too much because really, I don't think this ride is overhyped. Everyone I spoke with had extremely genuine reactions. Like that was my genuine reaction and it was such a big reaction because I had built up so much anticipation to ride it. I feel like I would have had this exact same reaction on the ride for my first time, regardless of media day. That is just how much Top Thrill 2 really blew my expectations out of the water. If you haven't seen the Top Thrill 2 media day vlog, I encourage you to watch it right here on the screen now, wherever it is. Um, thanks, bye.